All right, let's see, let's see. All right, I think we're live here, guys. There was a bit of a delay, but I think we're doing good here. I see the ads playing, so let's get this sucker going. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Xbox Roundtable podcast. This is show number 305, the St. Patrick's Day edition. I am Invader, and I'm ready to have a good time tonight just talking about some, well, you know, some Xbox stuff along with uh, some upcoming games and more. A little bit of this and a little bit of that, you could say. Welcome, 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 guys. Tonight we plan on discussing some Hellblade 2 as we go take a look at the photo mode. It's uh, looking pretty nice. As well, the Battlefront collection has released and has been making the rounds for, well, seemingly the wrong reasons, unfortunately. We'll talk about that, plus maybe some Persona 6 chat and hey, possibly some more stuff. But first, let me uh, introduce everybody. You know the drill by now. I gotta uh, introduce all these wonderful people on the show. Starting off with Dots. Dots, buddy, how you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've not too much different on on my front. Uh, m mixing between just normal video game play and uh, you know doing some mini painting. I've been diving back into. Um, some Battlefleet Gothic Armada 2, just to get some uh, RTS fix recently. You know, take a little break from Helldivers from time to time. Uh, it's still a very, it's still very much good game. Very holds up very well these days. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, uh, lots of good stuff. Uh, had a fun time with uh, Kaminsky on uh, Crusader on Friday. <laughs> uh, we had a for a little birthday party for him. I'm sure he'll talk about it too. But yeah, no, good times. Ooh la la, nice. Ooh, I want to know these details for sure. Moving on next, Grimes, Grimes brother, how you doing? What's up? What's up? Uh, f first of all, happy St. Patrick's to all. Uh, also, happy related to uh, Cr uh, Crusader. Thank you. Yeah uh still a youngin you know we're like old folks here but you know you still got a f several more years before becoming an old man but uh happy mm -hmm. uh w well um if anyone here follows english football today manchester united had a massive uh, victory against our arch rivals liverpool so that's why I, did, I watched all day. Uh, nice. We won. We won the match with the last kick of a game in extra time, and it was truly a match for the ages. Um, apart from that, I'm still playing uh, Dead Island Two, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I see. I see. Uh, you've started playing it. Hopefully, <laughs> you like it as well. Yeah, it's such, a, it's such a a good game to be honest. Mm hmm. Well, yeah, you were talking about it, and of course, uh, Centurion has been recommending it to me for the past year or so. So you know, once it hit Game Pass, yeah, you know, I decided to bite the bullet, and uh, hey, why not? It's <laughs> no harm in trying, right? And so far. I've actually been really enjoying it. Um, I'm still pretty early on, but it's the same thing I did with uh, Dead Island, uh, the original one. I didn't really think much of it at first. I actually had a copy laying around. I originally bought it for a friend, but then didn't get to hang out. And eventually I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Open it up. Start playing it. And I was really digging it. So... I don't know, so far I'm really enjoying this one as well, and uh, I'll see how much time I put into it, but I'm glad you guys recommended it to me. Yeah, I'm almost done with it, so yeah, it's, it's so fun. All right, all right. 
Next up, speaking of the man, Centurion. Hey, my Dead Island lover friend. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Just plugging away, gaming when I can. Um, mm -hmm. Ready to definitely talk about tonight's topics, but I've been just kind of doing my usual thing all over the place. Uh, playing Avatar, still kind of chipping mm -hmm. away at Banishers. I'm really close to beating Banishers. Nice. Um, obviously um and i don't know how it happened but um suicide squad is consuming a lot of time for me and mm -hmm. uh my, the friends i hang out with online because all of a sudden we are just like and digging the game enjoying the gameplay mm -hmm. um and that's pretty much like the most of it like yeah just kind of like that's su i i think it's funny suicide squad is taking up so much time honestly no, I mean, that's great, man. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I did play a little bit of Battlefront for a few hours, but we'll mm -hmm. get into that later. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll talk about that. Um, all right. Sounds good, but I'm happy to hear that, you know, you got a whole bunch of different games on uh, the back burner there. You know, lots of variety. Moving on. All right. Birthday boy, Mr. Crusader. Hey, bud. How you doing? I'm good. It's been a tiring weekend. Um, yeah, you know, I, I was originally going to spend my entire birthday on Friday playing the Battlefront Collection online with people, but the online is awful, which we'll talk about later. Um, hmm. So instead, we went to the bar. <laughs> Nice, um, last nice. minute, had people come from all over the state, and we went out to a local dive bar around here. Um, but yeah, no, it's it's been good. I beat both of the um, the first two mafia games this week. Mhm. Mm all right. Um, and uh, I'm on the third one, and I really like the third one, which I is evidently a hot take. No, um, I actually liked it, so it's such no, a fun game. the third one was actually a very excellent game. The, yeah. the story is really good. I understand why people don't like the, the format of the districts in the open world, uh, how it works. I get it. It is a very basic Ubi Ubisoft-esque formula. But, like, its narrative structure is by far the best one, where it's being told like a old, uh, uh, like, well, a true crime documentary. Yeah, it's really real. Uh, that's, I really hope the the fourth one that's in development is told in that same way. It also touches on a very, very, what shall I say, a very unique part of American history um, during that time where you had people coming home from the Vietnam mm -hmm. War, but there was also still the the issues of the civil rights movement and all that other stuff going mm -hmm. on behind the scenes and. I felt like it was a very well done game, and you know, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Yeah, so, I, I'm liking it too. I, but like, I am the per like I am the target audience for the Ubisoft open world style games. Um, like the the worst of them are the kind of ones that I play for serotonin. I, I like collectathons, and they're about the only collectathons that are released nowadays. Um, so you know. Um, I, I've just been running around the city doing all like doing all the collectibles. I've been having a great time in it. Um, I, uh, I understand collectibles, man. Playing the Batman games, I was. I've uh, done yeah, all that was Riddler, too much. That, that was. Oh, you that didn't was, do the Riddler was, trophy? Oh God, no, that was too much. I was. <laughs> I, I looked at. I looked at them in um in a uh, in night, and there's like a thousand or or what was it night or city that there's like a thousand or something. And I was like, I'm good. So Arkham Knight, it was worth it because it was the only way to face the Riddler. Right. Mm. Interesting. I did not know that actually, so that's yeah. very interesting. Wow. But uh, all right, all right, very good. I'm glad you had a good time uh, celebrating out on Friday night. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, guys in the chat, make sure to uh, you know wish uh, Crusader a happy birthday. Uh, give him your love. Moving on, who do we got here? Eric Shockley. Hey, Shockley, how you been the past week? Pretty good, pretty good. Just been uh, trying to there get through uh, some rebirth. Um, long, long-ass <laughs> game, just 
just when you're like playing it there's so much i feel like this one's like so much more obviously it's bigger because it's like out of the main city where you're actually like traversing world but damn it's 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 huge but having a blast with that um it's not as like lin well yeah the first one's kind of a little bit more linear so this one's just kind of um kind of just traverse almost kind of feels like you just go or do wherever you want i feel there's probably some um guidance in it where it's you know it wants you to go through a certain part of the story um but i remember playing the first one recently on the switch and you can get lost in that especially on how they had to do the game back then um it was almost kind of like uh hard to figure out like what pieces of land you could walk on versus like things you needed like a vehicle to get over (laughs) so i'm glad we've came so far because yeah, looking at the the traverse uh, traversal in the first game on PS One, so this is just it's just uh, hilarious just to see how like that kind of was versus like this is just I, I get I get why it took four years. So fortunately, that means we're probably gonna have to wait another four years. So, um, but although depending on where this one ends, it might not take them as long to hit the uh, hit that next one. Um, because I think later in the game it gets kind of more zoned in, in a in a focused manner, kind of like the uh, more of like what the first one was. But uh, we'll see. But I am uh, hyped uh, tomorrow. I'll get my uh, Retro Tink 4K comes in. So basically, you can take all of my retro consoles. You can take actually take the Switch, um, which is great, and just plug that thing in, and it's going to upscale it perfectly to 4k Ooh. Uh, which is great because switch really needs it on some of those games so <laughs> uh for some of the upscale but um really excited about that because you can actually put some high class somebody t- actually took some close uh footage of like hey old school like high-end uh grade like crts that are like top of the line when you play retro games on there it looks like all the pixels just line up crisp and usually when you upscale stuff like that to a 4K TV, usually your best you're getting is like 1080, 1440 maybe from the current scalers on the market. Um, but now since you can do 4K, you can get it super crisp and you, uh, it has some of these awesome filters that make it look almost identical to a CRT screen on your 4K monitor with everything. Pixels, you know, perfectly matched to your resolution of your TV. So I'm Super excited about that, so I'll definitely post some <laughs> pictures here once I get it this week. And uh, but yeah, I'm super super excited about that. So, uh, but yeah, that's what I've been playing and looking forward to this week. So, very nice, very nice. I gotta look up that thing for the Switch. Then, yeah, I wouldn't mind. Uh, you know, yeah, some... it's it's. Mm-hmm. I I probably wouldn't. It's it's it wasn't cheap. It was a. Uh... Mm-hmm. 750 so Ooh, really? <laughs> it is a luckily i was selling my old retro tink which was covering a good part of the cost and mm-hmm. a few other things so um but yeah if for, for switch try actually a thing called the m classic i think i've mentioned mm-hmm. it before okay um because that actually upscales to 1440 and it buffs out those edges because switch in some of those games you still kind of get some of that uh mm. like a listing like on the you know on the on the edge some of the jaggies um, yeah yeah yep smooths them right out and then it upscales them to 1440 so and that's only 100 bucks so okay that's probably more of rally definitely try that with that all right all right we'll have to look into that then eric thank you very much uh let's see guys i think we're still waiting on mld but i'll uh, let him take his time Uh, Before we begin, though, guys, a very, very quick reminder just to hit the like button and share out the show to let everybody know that we are currently live. I see some people in the chat already. Thank you all for being here, and I hope you enjoy the show. Okay, guys, um, gentlemen, without any further delay, let's uh, start talking about some Hellblade. Uh, The release date for the game is fast approaching, uh, late May, I believe. And a few days ago, we got some nice new screenshots taken uh, in the game's photo mode, actually, showing off Senua and a few different landscapes. And, hey, personally, I mean, I think it looks like a, 
a stunning game. I mean, I've said that from the get-go, ve visually very nice looking. I mean, personally, I would still like to see some gameplay. That being said, um, yeah, just gorgeous, and uh, the photo mode is looking uh, nice on it. Uh, Grimes, I know that you were uh, very, um, you know, you really enjoyed the screenshots. Um, oh, please tell me, like, uh, you know, how's the interest on the game for you? Are you liking the screenshots? Are you really interested in Hellblade 2? Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, it's super impressive. Uh, I'm still debating w where I'm going to install install the game. For convenience, obviously, it's the Xbox. X Xbox is the way to go, but for the best experience, um, it's obviously on, on Windows. So I'm still debating, but uh, it's mind-blowing how fast technology is moving. Uh, our bra our brains really can't tell the difference in graphical changes uh, if it's if for like two or three year period unless if it's something drastic uh usually with games changes changes are very subtle if you go back to hellblade one you would be like okay what's the big deal with this graphics uh, they just look okay, nothing special. Uh, but when the game came out, those graphics were a big deal. Um, the discussions surrounding the game were essentially the same ones we're having today. Uh, the game was in incredibly... Um, it, it was impressive, and the tech behind it was so good back then um and if we ever get a third game we'll be having the same conversation conversation uh yet, yet again uh, i'm definitely one of those gamers that uh uses the photo mode every chance uh they get uh, um Every couple of minutes, I take a, a photo. I probably took over a thousand pictures in Cyberpunk 2077. So I can't wait to uh, delve in in this game too. Uh, the game is going to be so good. Um, and yeah, the detail in those pictures, holy shit, you know what I mean? Uh, I think they're probably going to be using the same uh, it, it's probably going to be using all the uh, high settings when you use the photo mode and then when you go back in the game it, the quality is probably going to decrease because judging by those pictures it's using really high detail when, uh, when, you're, when, you're taking the, the, when you're using the photo mode uh, yes, I'm so hyped for the game. Like, believe it or not, the uh, release window is fast approaching. We're already close to April, which is insane. I mean, the, the year is going; it's moving so fast. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, before we know it, it's gonna be the uh, the June showcase, it, which is you know. But anyway. Uh, also, if you haven't played the first game uh, it, and you don't have Game Pass, it's currently available on Steam for $3. So, and the first game is excellent. So, yeah, if you haven't played it, here's your chance for like $3. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, I'm sure the guys will agree that those screenshots were amazing and I can't wait to hear what you guys think have to say as well mm-hmm mm -hmm. got to say i'm curious as well uh dots i'll hit you up next uh again uh have any thoughts on the newly released uh hellblade two shots i mean again looking pretty uh sweet in that photo mode i would say yeah no they looked really good um but i'll keep it short and sweet i still haven't even played the first game i haven't been keeping too much track on the second game the graphics look great. Um, I'm really happy for the people who are hyped for the game, and yeah, I don't, I don't really have too much else to say on it. They look good. 
Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair, honestly. And uh, I mean, I did play the first game. I I really liked it. I think what I liked the most was, uh, well, there was two things. One, the audio. I mean, everybody talks about the audio in the game. But I did really like the attention to detail on, like, the character models and everything. I just thought that they, I, know, I just thought, like, when you saw everything in movement, I thought that it looked really nice. So, yeah, there's that for me anyways. Uh, let's see, uh, who do we got? Uh, Shockley. Shockley, I mean, I would like to know your thoughts. I don't know, did you get a chance to see the, uh, the new, uh, Hellblade 2 picks? And if so, like, what are your thoughts? Like, do you think they look nice, average? Man, what do you think? Yeah, they look pretty sick. Um, that was, obviously, we've been seeing pictures, uh, from, like, all the past screens. They always give us those, like, dev updates. Um, but yeah, some of these are pretty impressive so um because they haven't really done they've done like the trailers and those already look great in motion but yeah some of the photo mode maybe this will be some of the hopefully that's you get some of that in the gameplay Uh, i don't know we'll see maybe that's just for high end did they say if this was on a what it was on or if this was you know on an xbox or Uh, i'm I'm sure I, i think i read xbox but i'm not sure but to, it's to a, solve... it's a Go photo ahead, mode, I'm... so it shouldn't matter. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, that's that's true. Um, but yeah, no, it looks sick. So it's it's good that we're getting some of that because I guess you know Xbox games in the past have either purposely not kind of gone down the re- realism track because obviously you have gears which looks great. So like when you check out, you know the facial like just like the detail the characters always their faces kind of look slightly off because they're not like going for super realism in the face because their characters are kind of like designed a certain way but you can kind of see in like gears 5 like how detailed like the pores and just like the facial like the hair you know how that all that all that looks so you know that you know they so they've had games like graphically to that point um, but yeah, it's cool to just see, cause this is like one of their, I guess probably one of their first games or IP, you know, using the, uh, Unreal Engine pretty much been in, you know, development from that point or using that engine from like the ground up pretty much, uh, since they start developing. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it looks pretty sick. Um, so hopefully <laughs> they'll get close to that. Um, you know, by the game, by the time the game, you know, uh, I'm not sure. I guess we're still in wait of like when it's coming. I think they kind of announced that it was like earlier in the year May, or la- earlier, but like maybe the first half. But... May 21st. Yeah, May 21st. Okay. So hopefully, yeah, they put all the polish they need and hopefully, uh, at least maybe in like the <laughs> cutscenes you kind of get. Because uh, that's a lot of times where a lot of these games get like the most recognition because like when you actually play a game like last of us gets like all of that kind of like uh recognition but a lot of that is in the cut scenes because when you actually play it there's plenty of scenes where you can find it's kind of like with the whole if anybody remembers with like quantum break and that that meme that you always saw go around from uh what's that one guy's name that was played in the, played one of the hobbits and they took that dumb like facial just like in one of the someone took a snapshot of him <laughs> one of his characters when it wasn't like in a cut scene and he just looks confused and dumb um <laughs> but that Ron like ashmore no 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 it was the other yeah, the, the other one uh the, the what's his yeah, face yeah, yeah. from the hobbit movies billy, and lost. billy what billy is it billy boyd or is it the other from one? lost from the lost tv show from lost tv show but he also played one of the hobbits but yeah on Lord of the Rings, um, but he he's like in that game. But and when you watch like the cutscenes, they look great because they're modeled off the actors. But um, but then in one of them, it's just kind of like you can find that part in a game just like you could with like Returnal, when people kept using like that mirror image. Like you can find points in a game where a game looks doesn't look good. Like <laughs> um, Dominic Monaghan is the actor. Yeah. Like you're trying to um, think of. 
but you can find points in a game, even some of the best like Sony Studio games, when just if there's a bunch of shit happening. Uh, I remember I was playing as Abby in Lost in uh, uh, Last of Us Two, and there's a part where like you're in an open environment and like so much shit is going on around you, but if you just like had her stand still for a second, looked at her face, it looked kind of jank. <laughs> so like something was wrong. So like you can find that stuff, but you need to kind of also have some of the high end like cut scenes to sh- also show off the power just because that's what gets a lot of people like looking at the game of like, oh my God, look at, you know, look how, what this hardware can do. Look what this console, they kind of show off the tech because people, you know, go for that. So hopefully you can kind of see some of that, obviously nail some of this like quality, obviously it's this photo mode, but hopefully they can get like close to that and some of the video cut scenes. Although I think Hellblade did a really, the first one did a really good job where they kind of seamlessly transitioned. I don't know if they're going to, it was weird in the first one because they used like real footage <laughs> and sometimes, or like some scenes. Cause I was like, Oh, this looks really good. But I'm like, Oh wait, no, this is just real video. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was because um, of their budget, so I'm sure. Yeah, their budget, yeah. 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 So I, I wonder if they're, I'm guessing they probably won't need to, or, you know, because they're using this engine. So if they can they nail that in photo it mode. Might be cheaper than rendering it. Yeah, that, that's true. Did, did you hear about that with Dragon's Dogma 2? Uh, oh, it was that cheaper they... for them to go out and buy and film the meat and put the assets of the film, the meat being cooked into the game, than it was to actually render meat cooking on a, uh, on a fire stove. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they they were like, we could get meat for the office for the same price and everyone could have barbecue. Hmm. Or we could pay to 3D render this. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, they they make it. I mean, it's already looking like a graphical masterpiece. So, And hopefully it's a little bit longer than, you know, what people were. Here, although I mean, it doesn't need to be that long, but just like nailing the combat, nailing the look of it, and making mm-hmm. sure it's, uh, you know, hits as high as a mark because Xbox definitely needs it. And this is definitely a game that could hit like a 90, which would be great for them. Obviously, Metacritic is, you know, kind of overblown or overrated in a sense, but it's nice to see, you know, it, it'd be cool, especially since. Final Fantasy Rebirth came out, which is kind of obviously, since it's exclusive, kind of treated like a first party, you know, game for Sony. Um, so when that hit like 92 or 93 on Metacritic, and then Xbox is like, you know, oh, yeah, we don't, we have Persona and Reloaded and Game Pass, but <laughs> which is great, but, um, you know, also not exclusive. So it'd be cool if like this one hits at least a few months after rebirth and like cool this one hit you know 90 or 92 you know it would just be because i don't think they've had one since like i think forza horizon <laughs> so um yeah that would be at least a, a good kind of turn for them so hitting this you know we're already seeing it's graphically going to be amazing so um hopefully you just nail that and we'll get even more footage here soon so um yeah that was pretty much all i had to say all right, and very well said there, Eric. Uh, next up, uh, Centurion. I mean, Cent, I would love to hear your thoughts here. I mean, yeah, I mean, personally, I think, you know, some pretty nice uh, picks coming out here for uh, Hellblade 2. I mean, I, I'd have to agree with Shockley. I mean, it's looking like a, a graphical showpiece, to say the least. And, uh, you know, it's right around the corner, too. What, like two months away? I mean, we're getting there now. Uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, do you like the look of the game? Uh, yeah, what the photo mode showing off there? So I'm going to be like Dots. I'm going to keep it uh, short, simple, and sweet. Um, mm-hmm. Does the game impress me? Yes. But is it what, like, I mean, what do I expect from the fact that I've kept up with Ninja Theory? I've seen the technology that they're using in Project Mara and using LiDAR tech to create some of the the best textures we've seen in gaming. And we've also seen them on stage uh, with uh, the developers of Unreal Engine 5 um, basically creating MetaHuman and doing things that would be considered witchcraft years ago. 
So that's where I really do feel that this game is going to speak, a ve you know, speak very, it's going to show that Ninja Theory is a very excellent studio. It was a really great purchase from, um, by Microsoft's means. And that Hellblade is definitely going to be a, a showpiece for whatever you want to play, whether it's on the Xbox or or on PC, it's going to be a showpiece hands down. Um, I don't really get into photo modes, but definitely you can see like there is going to be a lot of people who do that are going to enjoy this. And I mean, there's not really much more that can be said other than that this is just totally what Ninja Theory prides themselves on doing. And the fact that if anybody knows anything about how Ninja Theory develops games, um, they use very small teams of developers to craft these experiences. And the fact that, you know, we're seeing yet again a a double A studio just outshine these massive conglomerates of triple A studios that have these massive budgets and massive teams. And we're just yet again seeing a, a company like Ninja Theory just totally um, outshine a lot of companies that have huge, huge uh, backing when it comes to technology and human resources. So definitely um, something that I'm going to check out when it hits Game Pass. I still got to get the first game under my belt. But yet again, this is just going to show why Ninja Theory is the studio that they are. Mm-hmm. No, well said there, Sent. Well, uh, well said, and uh, yeah, I mean, I can't wait to see more of it as well. Again, I'm, I'm very curious about like again more of the combat too, and uh, again locations and just just a little bit of everything really. But uh, I'm also excited. Just again, not like a really bloated game either. You know, just like a, you know, I don't want to say short game, but you know, average, right? Average, and uh, that's kind of what I want to sink my teeth into right now. <laughs> So pretty, pretty. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, not too, not too uh, long to wait for that one. And uh, yeah, Crusader, uh, round us off here on Hellblade again. The guys we've been talking about the screenshots. Uh, I mean, I would say they're they're looking pretty good. What are your thoughts? Um, so I've never had concerns that the game is going to not be a visual stunning game. So it just is kind of more of the same. Um. People who follow me on, like, Twitter know I don't post, like, clips or screenshots very often, if at all, except if it's, like, to capture, like, a moment of triumph, so to speak. Like, first time when, like, Dots and I complete a raid in Destiny, sometimes I'll take a screenshot of, like, all of us at the end and post it or something like that. But, um, you know, I, I like, so, like, this doesn't really mean much to me, if I'm going to be 100%. Like, I... I the game already looked visually stunning, and I, to me, I look at this and I don't see it as any more visually stunning than like what we've seen for the past four years. Um, it it looks fantastic, <laughs> you know. Um, I I I I really hope that because they've been focused so much on the visuals and audio and like that's what they've been describing the game as. Really, really, really hope that they have uh improved the fluidity of the combat or have removed most of the rigid like re streamlined it from what it was in the first game because that was like the one bad part of the first game having just beaten it did i beat it this year or late last year i don't quite remember i beat it in the last six months um and i i really hope that they do something to adjust that uh that that the actual gameplay aspect but i mean visually it looks phenomenal um audio sounded phenomenal from the from the last stuff that we've seen that but like i it's just essentially to me they're showing more of the same of the game um so very pretty Yes, very pretty, very detailed, and uh, I want to see more, oh, more. If anyone's curious as to why I don't think it really matters whether it's on Xbox or PC um, for the photo mode, photo modes are not rendered in real time. They are basically a single frame that's rendered, and then you, you can put filters and stuff over it. So typically in photo modes, um, you're getting a significantly higher resolution image because they, they don't have to render an image... 30 to 60 times a second, right? You're, you're, 
you have a statically rendered um, subject subject matter. So I I would assume that you would get very similar things um, between uh, console and PC in that regard. So yeah, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I, but... I would I would guess even if it's not the same on console and PC, it's going to be very similar and like not the net vast majority of people wouldn't be able to tell you um which is which in the photo modes for sure i definitely wouldn't be able to tell you like straight up unless you know we're talking like an xbox one versus a pc photo mode but even like you know if you i don't know if anyone else here has played cyberpunk 2077 but the photo mode on the xbox was also uh impressive so yeah i would imagine yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll imagine. The, the the only difference now between those two is after the phantom liberty update where they added the full um the full path trace ray tracing yeah. there's a difference between the two be, that's because like functionally there's an entire uh the entire lighting is different on console and pc if you have the path tracing enabled with cyberpunk because yeah. like cyberpunk is probably the most Stunning, like has probably the most stunning uh, photo mode on the market. I don't know that this takes it from that. Uh, and again, only because I don't think it's going to have full path tracing on, um, even on PC. I think it's kind of nuts that in Cyberpunk that they bothered to put it into Cyberpunk <laughs> on PC. But like, hey, yeah, it looks pretty, I guess. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um. Yeah, either way, guys, I mean, Hellblade, we know it's going to be a pretty game. And uh, I just, again, I want to learn more about it. I'm glad we saw some stuff uh, this past week. But yeah, I want to, I just, I really want to learn more about it. I want to get some more details. And I, again, I hope that they, uh, you know, have just some kind of a massive, uh, you know, uh, like more media out for it soon, right? I mean, it's just around the corner. So maybe in April, maybe we'll see something in April for it, I hope. Uh, guys, any more thoughts, uh, comments regarding Hellblade 2? Yes, no? Okay, alright. I get it, guys. Uh, okay, gentlemen, um, we will move on to some other bits of news. But to everybody listening, guys, share out the, uh, the show. Uh, it's been a pretty fun episode so far. And yeah, sub if you're new. And uh, hey, smash the like button. All right, let's talk some uh, Battlefront, guys. Yes, we will talk Battlefront. Uh, very recently, Star Wars Battlefront uh, Classic Collection released, and it's been causing quite of a, well, a ruckus, and for the wrong reasons. Um, launching with multiple, like, multiplayer issues, bugs, and a short list of other things. Granted, I mean, hey, I don't have the game personally, but I know a few people on the panel have been playing it, and uh, I, I, again, I've seen, I know social media can just blow up things, unfortunately. Uh, that being said, I don't know, just, there's a lot of stuff missing with this game. Um, now, again, this game, it wasn't even announced not too long ago, which is kind of weird. I maybe a month or so maybe two months i, I can't remember but it's not not too long ago and it just kind of came out of the blue a lot of people were excited but uh yeah it's just it's very unfortunate uh dots um you know let's let's peek into the dark side for a bit shall we my friend um you know have you been playing the game at all and honestly like you know what's your thoughts on like this whole situation because uh, it doesn't seem like aspire has well handled this one very well at least from what i've been seeing anyways well to start your pun did not go unappreciated so you can at least rest assured on that um <laughs> uh remember remember last week when i said i would like to start talking about positive news where's the positive news blame you for this <laughs> hey, listen shut up um <laughs> Uh no it 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 it's it it re it really sucks it I mean so I bought the game I have not I actually have not even opened the game I haven't turned it on because I know that what it's that twelve hour period once you start playing on Steam two, that you keep, two hour two hour, that I meant to say two I don't know I said twelve um two hour period on Steam before you can refund it um I'm just gonna hold on to it for the for the moment 
but I'm I don't know. I mean, Battlefront Two is like the original Battlefront Two is also already on Steam, and that one runs just fine. So like, the fact that this port upgrade, you know, minor fixes has been a total disaster. The you know, I don't know where the extra seventy gigs came from to you know update the game. I've seen videos of texture rendering issues so many bugs crashes they started they only had three 64 player servers on launch when ten thousand people were getting on on launch it absolute travesty (laughs) among travesties it and because this game obviously is a huge pandering to nostalgia i mean I remember, I remember Crusader literally saying, "Yeah, I know the game's bad, but I got into the menu and hearing all the, all the 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 beep boom kind of noises when you move through the menu." <laughs> so nostalgic, like I heard well, as soon as he said that, I heard that in my brain. I'm like, "That's the battlefront I remember too," and so you know, and a lot of people hit that, and like the trailer obviously got a lot of people hyped. And, you know, seeing, oh, my gosh, new content potentially or like, you know, cut content brought into into the into the game for us to play. Like there's so there was so much good potential, but like. It, I haven't heard anything good come out of it, really, since it launched. And my concern now is that. People are already you know, bitching and complaining about, oh, the quality of new games. And then we get a couple, you know, like like Helldivers is a good example of a new game that came out. Complete. No, really, not many issues besides a lack of server capacity because they couldn't handle all the people trying to join. A good problem to have, just obviously their team but wasn't ready for even it even with this one though they didn't even have enough servers to be no no with. yeah th- three servers <laughs> 364 players that's a that's probably enough for their studio to play and that's it man <laughs> like it, like the only other option to play is land but like uh, everything else like not many people play split screen co-op anymore because people don't they don't hang out with their friends that are next door. Like it's, and you know, freaking Halo doesn't do it anymore. So that's obviously not, you know, that's not keeping people, you know, Hey, I want on, you know, sharing a TV screen. So there's no, no one's doing really LAN. So you got to go online and the online is three servers. And like, no. So like I was saying, it's like, so people already are complaining and being concerned about the quality of new games, but now we have to be concerned about the quality of old games they bring back to us. It's absurd. I mean, it's literally like, can we trust companies with the older games we want back? I mean, I know that's going to be an issue. Some people are going to be worried about with, um, the older Call of Duty games, I know, um, the, or like just a bunch of like older, like maybe even Blizzard Activision content, among other things. I mean, I know um, once again, pointing at Crusader, I know he's constantly begging Sony to p- uh, bring Ratchet and Clank up to modern Ten consoles. of them. <laughs> so but now we have to be afraid that them you know just porting up a game could potentially cause problems and i know it's i know it wasn't a pure like one-to-one port for the battlefront collection but like if they if that's what they did it would and, and assuming the server issue was taken care of like I'm a, I, like, I'm not a game developer. I know someone's like, oh, you might not understand the ins and outs of these movements or what goes into it. No, I don't. But when you take a game as old as Battlefront and Battlefront 2, the original ones, and you bring them to modern, which they're already on Steam. You can already play ba- the original yeah. Battlefront 2 on Steam. And there's no issues with it. You can change the starship controls from inverted to 
uh, inverted, averted, what do you know, back and forth. Apparently you can't even do that in the new ones. You You're cannot. stuck on inverted controls. <laughs> like, it, 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 it concerns me that gaming companies can't even bring old games to the modern stage without causing problems. So, like, we, we, new games we can hardly trust, old games we can't start trusting. Like, what is up with video game companies these days? It, it, mm -hmm. it, it's abysmal. And, I mean, this is probably one of the more heated times I've been on the show, but, like, I, it's, it's, it's beyond frustrating. The fact that something as classic and nostalgic as Battlefront, one and two, the originals. I have to keep saying the originals. Um, like, so much good times, memories, and, like, even the gameplay holds up today when it works. Like, I remember, you know, a couple of years after, you know, we, me and Crusader in high school, we were playing, I think, we were playing, like, a Mass Effect mod on Battlefront 2, and, like, that was really cool. But, like, the gameplay holds... You know, even if you put a fun little skin on it and whatnot, but like, uh, like, and people and people are enjoying this, like, this simplicity of like content, like, like I, I like again, I'm gonna point to Helldivers again. Helldivers is a very simplistic game. It really is. There's not, it's nothing really complex to it. You drop into a mission, you do the objective, you do side objectives if you think you can do it without, you know, wasting your time. And you're done. And you rinse and repeat that. Obviously, MMOs, it's big exploration. Do this, do that, that this, the, 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 and all that stuff. Destiny has gotten to that point. Destiny, it's like, oh, if you want to do everything, you got to do strikes. You got to go to a crucible. You got to do Gambit because they still make Gambit relevant, even though they're never going to support Gambit ever again. Um, you got to do trials. You got to do raids. Like, if you want to do all the good stuff. And, like, you know, but something as simplistic as. Get on a game of Battlefront with your friends. Play for a couple hours. Everyone has the exact same loadouts. Everyone has access to the exact same things. You know, that one good player on the enemy team gets enough kills so they can pull out Darth Maul and Polis Moss and kill your entire team before you have a chance to do anything. Like, no better feeling than that. And modern game studios are more focused on layoffs than bringing content that us gamers will pay them money to play for years to years to come but that's not their priority it seems or if it is their priority it's rushed it's not internally tested like i can't like I don't want to blame uh, all of Aspire. I'm I'm sure it you know there's there's you know the the higher up corporates uh, people um you know are probably pulling the strings. Well, like, you know, it is kind of sus with uh, releasing it because isn't it like the end of the quarter as well? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we are near we are near the end of the quarter. You are correct. Yeah, so I don't know. I'm like just me because I was thinking about it. I'm like hmm they might just be trying to get this out. Just because it's, you know, coming up to the end of the quarter. Because, hey, that does happen, guys. That does happen. Yeah, well, unfortunately, with how many refunds I've been hearing people have been putting up, that's not really helping it's my anybody. Steam version. Yeah. So, like, it it, I, it, it... it just blows me away that, like, we can't trust modern... Like, we can't... We, we can't we can't look at a trailer for a video game anymore. See that it's something we like, pre-order it, and be like, I'm going to be happy when the game comes out because I know it's going to be good. Like, when is the last time that you guys ever pre-ordered a game way ahead of the line and you just you just knew that when it, the game dropped, it was going to be fire? Ratchet and like, Clank Rift Apart. Okay, so a Ratchet and Clank game, but you know that's that's great. Like that, and that luckily has been a good IP slash franchise that like you know has been consistently up to standard, mm. which is awesome. That the, for me it was Ace Combat Seven because mm -hmm. every Ace Combat game is fire, and if you say I'm wrong, I'm gonna fight you in a parking lot. All right, so like, <laughs> like I can't I, like. 
I, I can't I can't pre-order games anymore without being skeptical. I can't, you know, look at a trailer. I can't look at a trailer for Battlefront Classic Collection and like, you know, seeing all the nostalgic stuff and it, you know, it just looks like the the original game and I can't be like, you know, oh, I'm going to pre-order that and it's going to drop and it's going to be great. Because an old game apparently can't even keep up with that anymore. And that's that's absolutely terrible. So, like I don't know. It once again, we are not getting good news, and I want good news in the gaming industry. Where is my good news? I've been looking for it. <laughs> as as Kami could say, where's the content? <laughs> getting a, a old style lantern. It's like, where's the content? <laughs> so I I'm 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 aggravated. I, I, I wanna see things change, but so far I'm not seeing change in a good way. And so it's a mixture of being patient and, you know, hopefully, you know, praying that there's games coming out in the future that are going to be good. You know, I'm s Invader, you and my, me and, you know, and we're going we're gonna to be waiting for Space Marine 2 uh, until, you know, I was about three to years say. from now. <laughs> hey, man, um, don't say that. Do not say that. I have that oh, okay, bloody statue pre-ordered. They're, 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 they're going to release it when they release a, another uh, Primark for uh the the tabletop <laughs> well uh, the rate they've been going maybe soon <laughs> I, I i hear rumors it's gonna be um space wolves dude uh oh russ yeah i, I i've heard rumors they're, they're they're deep rumors i don't think they're legit but you know it, it's 40k there's always rumors of what the next big thing is eh. but that's what i've heard eh. um but you know so I, i'm i'm hoping like you know, uh, Space Marine Two. I think I think that's the biggest game I'm th I'm waiting for at the moment until something else pops up. Mm -hmm. Oh well, uh, obviously, um, Age of Mythology. Mm -hmm. Like that's, oh, I if if that gets this. screwed up somehow, I'm I'm gonna riot. I'm if, I'm act. <laughs> if you I'm curse this, you won't have a bed when you go home. <laughs> it will be if in your I, shower. If I have the power to curse games on launching. That's I don't see how that's my <laughs> I don't see how that's my doing. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I'm upset. I I've seen so many other people upset. I know it's not just me, and I just I'm I'm hoping that like you know we we get some we get some good and again because I mean th this 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 year is not a year of failures. We had we've had successes this year already. So it's not, it's not like you know we're we're at a peak and we're sloping down. It, it's going to be up and down, up and down. I hope all year. So here's hoping that we get we get something good coming forward. But right now, at the moment, I'm pretty upset. I mean, it, it ruined Crusaders' weekend. I mean, come on, guys. I didn't ruin it. It just made me change it the last minute. <laughs> it ruins your weekend, all right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Change, hey, change up of plans can uh, sometimes be a good thing, but no, no, no. I, I, I hear you guys. I hear yeah. you. So, no, that that's all I got. I, I my ang angry dots tirade out of the way. I don't give them often, but I mean, this time it just it just felt like it needed to happen. So, no, that's cool, man. I think we all appreciate when you connect those uh, angry mental dots. <laughs> so, no worries. Okay, you, you you had one pun on me today. You don't get two. <laughs> Hey, hey, come on! I, what I have a I have a pun allocation now. How many times I can use it? I have a, like a little uh, docket there that uh... Uh, government mandated pun limit. Ugh. <laughs> lame, lame. Managed I think even democracy. The, even the ch yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> you, you, we'll see there, dots. Uh, okay, so Crusader. I mean, I'll go to you next um, because obviously this affected you a bit on your uh, to start off your weekend. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Please uh, relay your thoughts, to everybody. I have seventeen hours in the um, collection thus far. Okay. I was going to try to 100% the achievements at the very least. Um, though the single player plays okay. I didn't have major issues in the single player. The lack of being able to invert controls completely ruined the ability to do space combat for me, which is one of the best parts of Battlefront 2. Um, I, I, my, my lizard brain cannot comprehend 
switching to inverted controls at this point in my life. Um, so I, I have to wait for that to that functionality from the originals to get put back in. Um, but uh, I was going to try to 100% it, but the achievement for getting all of the other achievements is, of course, bugged on Xbox. Um, it is literally impossible to get the full 1,000 gamer score right now, so I just kind of gave up, and I'm going to wait for the game to get patched. Um, I was so excited to play it online all day Friday. I was going. I, I purchased it on two platforms. I was going to get it on PlayStation as well to play um, with people who only play it there because it wasn't announced as crossplay, which was at first something I was okay with. It is an old game, and Aspire is not a studio that does much, if any, multiplayer content. And so I was going to be okay with them not completely having to redo their netcode to allow um, multiple platforms to connect with each other. That that seemed fine. But then they had the massive uh, server issues at launch, which, to be fair, it was only three servers at launch because the, the other ones actually failed to stand up. And as a network IT guy, I can commiserate with that a bit. I've had that happen in my, li in my line of work. Um, but you literally cannot party up with your friends and then go into a server. You all must individually connect to the same server and log into it. Like... They legitimately didn't add any quality of life multiplayer functionality to a game from 2004, 2005, depending on which one you're talking about. And that's kind of exceptionally frustrating. Um, and I did also try and play it split screen. I played probably a good four hours of split screen with uh, uh, our good friend. Uh, we'll use his uh, uh, pseudonym as Dendar. We were playing with our good friend. Uh, I was playing with my good friend Dendar uh, after we got back from the bar while we were both. Uh, uh, kind of toasted um and we were playing a little bit before we went getting the split screen to work on xbox took us like 25 minutes i had to restart the console twice because it just wouldn't recognize that uh we had a second controller turned on with a guest profile signed in we had to go into battlefront one uh and get the get it to recognize the guest there then swap back over to battlefront 2 to actually get battlefront 2 to recognize that we had another controller plugged in it was incredibly frustrating um although i will give it credit for this uh we turned the console off because i wanted to test to see how quick resume would work with uh the split with a uh, um split screen local co-op okay. and how quick resume would handle that it actually did handle that beautifully we were shocked um but like once once you get split screen working not even turning your console off will 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 break it which is kind of really cool i'll give them that credit that was awesome um but like you know it, it, it the single player played well I, I had a couple bugs where like i couldn't move forward after spawning i had to move side to side for a couple seconds and then it would let me walk forward um, I didn't have any of the big texture issues, but most of that seems to be if you are actually connecting to a multiplayer server uh, and trying to go online, um, it, it seems to cause issues with texture streaming and you'll get missing textures all over the place. Um, if you're playing Battlefront 1 and you're playing the Clone Wars campaign, uh, uh, and you're playing that split screen, I've heard you can crash pretty hard because of the, um, Gungans. I didn't get a chance to try and replicate that one myself. Um, there were a couple other crashes I ran into, um, mostly with, uh, uh, they're, they're pretty repeatable. Um, they're like, if certain things happen in certain parts of certain maps, you can crash the game pretty hard. Um, it's just not a good launch. Uh, and even my absolute adornment of the franchise and why I put 17 hours into a broken build of it still makes me incredibly frustrated. Um, uh, the achievement list is pretty pretty fine. Um, like I said, the, the one that's the equivalent of the Platinum Trophy on PlayStation, it's a 200 gamer score achievement on Xbox, uh, is just broken. You, you cannot get it. Like, you go on True Achievements, and you can see that 0% of people have the, have the achievements, and everyone in the comments is marking that one as bugged. Um... The one for knocking a Jedi off of a, a Jedi or a Sith hero off of the ma a map in Battlefront One, uh, 
is exceptionally buggy. I tried it four or five times and couldn't get it, like, successfully knocked them off, but it didn't count. It didn't pop the achievement. And uh, online read, yep, that achievement is exceptionally buggy. So, like, you know, it, it's just... They, they didn't add a lot. And it also looks like, you know, they did actually just steal the user's content that from those mods that we were talking about last week. Because the same bugs that exist in those exist on the characters. Even though those characters are straight up in the Xbox version of the game, and they could have just taken the code from the Xbox version of the game, they have seemingly stole someone's port of that content for PC and not credited them or paid them in any way. So, like, you know, it, it's just kind of a shit show. Like, through and through. And it, it's, in, it's incredibly frustrating. As, as someone who was... So excited. I had two copies of it pre-ordered on, on Xbox and on PC. Refunded the PC one without even installing it, because there was no reason to have the second version purchased at all. Like, like none at all. Um, yeah, it, it's just so bad. Also, Zombie Bird Lady is not an accurate description of Asajj Ventress, but I do appreciate the uh, the attempt there, uh, Thimber. Um... But yeah, it's just so bad. Like, it, it, the, if you just want to play the single player stuff and like instant action or the 501st campaign or the Clone Wars and Galactic Civil War campaigns in um, in Battlefront 1, you want to get achievements, then yeah, I guess it's a good enough. Uh, there's still bugs and questionable moral legal stuff with the mods but it's i guess good enough uh if you don't care about achievements just buy the old xbox versions of the game instead they are literally more stable um or uh you, you can't get online multiplayer but like even if you can get into the multiplayer now the ping is like 200 milliseconds which anyone who plays like competitive fps shooters knows that that's absolutely abysmal like it is it is the 20% of a second for you to get a response time from the server most of the time. It, it, it's awful. So, yeah. Stay away for now. All right. All right. Uh, wise words there uh, from Crusader. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of people uh, go towards the older versions of the game, uh, whether it be on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, etc. Um, or just I don't wait. know what it is with aspire and star wars content because they just released the tomb raider trilogy mm. and the tomb raider trilogy was great mm -hmm. it was a great re-release but when it comes to star wars shit like this and the the kotor port that they did to the switch of kotor 2 that was a didn't have the dlc they promised and b didn't uh wasn't beatable it crashed on a planet and then the remake of kotor like why, why, stop giving them Star Wars stuff, please. Let them re <laughs> let them port other games. They they obviously cannot handle Star Wars for some reason. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Very unusual. Uh, let's see. I'll move on to Shockley and then Centurion. Shockley, buddy. I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts here. Um, I don't know if you've been keeping track of the Star Wars Battlefront collection. Um, but, uh, yeah, lots of reports coming in, uh, from all kinds of users, uh, like, social media has just been kind of lit about, again, the various, like, issues showing up with the collection. Again, what, what are your thoughts about this? Because, again, like, uh, historic, like, again, well-loved, uh, games from a decade or more ago, and, uh, you know, we're talking about, like, original Xbox, PlayStation 2 titles, and you'd probably be best just playing off the original titles, just buying them, <laughs> really, from Steam. Uh, again, what, what's your thoughts on this whole situation here with Aspire and, uh, how the release has been? Uh, yeah, it's kind of crappy uh it, it was cool when they first announced it um because i especially back in the day that was i think i moved on to 360 by that point when like a lot of people i didn't play the first like battlefront um and then when battlefront 2 was being played and a lot of people were on that um at that point i had already kind of like 
sold my Xbox. I don't know if that was backwards compatible in 360. I don't think it was, but um, like on the when you played the old Xbox games on 360. But um, by that point, I was straight 360. I had it day one, so I'd play some like Halo 2 because that was backwards compatible back then. So um, at that point, I had just <laughs> moved on. So I was all into that, you know, new like every everything that you know 360 was bringing in at that point which was mind-blowing but i saw the uh I used to work at a fries electronics around that time and so we'd have battlefront and quite a few other like demos set up so people were customers and people were like playing that it looked pretty sick so and to be playing it online with some of the um some of your favorite characters that would have been pretty dope so i didn't get that experience back then so to see the you know obviously i went and bought the backwards compatible titles on series x um but obviously those aren't online so when i heard this was coming out and i thought maybe xbox would get skipped um like they have on some of the other ones because it was kind of like i guess redundant um when there's already like a backwards compatible title um but it was cool to find out okay cool they're bringing this to all platforms and this one's going to have uh, multiplayer. So, but hearing that how the servers are limited, I don't know if hopefully that you know gets you know expanded upon, and they hopefully, hopefully maybe do the yeah bring servers has been fixed. It's just the ping now. Oh, okay, it's just the ping. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully they just improve some of the or bring some of the uh, like. Crossplay or something. I don't know. Well, hopefully, you know, they just improve the experience from that point on. But it just sounds like there's not as much care being like, if you're going to, you know, bring these games back, like, it's kind of like with Nintendo when they're like, cool, we're bringing these uh, N64 games back. And guess what? You get to play online. That's amazing. Like, you know, I wish you could have done that with the. N64 back in the day when you had to have a split screen and had to play on a tiny, not only probably because not everybody had like a giant CRT because those things were fucking heavy. Um, but then also then you have that tiny little screen when you're playing like four player co-op and stuff like that. Um, so when they were, I was, you know, excited when they brought out the, uh, that you, hey, you could, some of these, most of these titles you can play that have like multiplayer, you can play online catches you it's kind of like destiny <laughs> but you know a lot less a, a minuscule amount of people probably that you can find that are you know you're not going to find a uh looking for a group of people who have the expansion pack of the nintendo switch online that want to play mario tennis <laughs> like because you can't there's no matchmaking so you have to like literally find somebody, share a friend code with them, and then join a game. So it's basically as soon as they announced that, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm, so I'm never going to be able to do it, because <laughs> I don't know anybody. <laughs> I know people that have plenty of uh, plenty of people that have Switches, and then that probably have Nintendo Switch online, but don't have the extra pay the extra money for, like, to play N64 games, so... Stuff like that's kind of annoying, like when they do bring these games back, and then if there's, you know, just something where they could have just done a lot more, or just, you know, fix some of the issues. <laughs> um, sa same thing with Microsoft when they, although theirs was at least ambitious when they did MCC, so <laughs> um, it, it still shouldn't have been the shit show it was when it launched, but they were at least like doing something new with it, um, you know. So they were trying to. The intention was there. So um, I'll probably. I own Battlefront. Uh, Battlefront Two. I never played the f first one they brought back. Um, back in like 2015, 2016. Uh, but when they did Battlefront Two, definitely jumped on that. And that one, I've had a, spent a ton of hours and had a blast. So I'll probably just stick to that. Maybe I'll check this one out. But I don't know. What is it like? Forty forty bucks. 30, Five and it's on. 40. It has a launch discount to thirty-one. Oh, okay. Maybe I don't know. There's there's still so much other things to play it. So play if it's not like, else. yeah, 
<laughs> Plus, yeah, so many people still play like Battlefront 2, so which is dope for even for all the shit it got back in the day. It, uh, although technically it launched with with no loot boxes, which was the whole issue. I was more <laughs> pissed with that one because halfway in it, you still would use the loot boxes, but you have to like pay for them or whatever. Um, or like I think you could, but I don't know. They fixed some of that part in there where it wasn't like so super hard to like try to grind. But I think like halfway, I, I came back to it after a year, and the way to uh, grind and finish like leveling up or maxing out your characters or what have you, they like completely like change that uh, currency or <laughs> grind system. So at that point, I was like, oh wait, I was almost done, and then now I have to do something completely out, something. Uh, completely different uh to like that's not as easy to like just cheese to get to the end of like grinding out and maxing out all your characters that you want to use so but um but yeah maybe i'll check it out but um i was definitely you know looking excited for it maybe i'll wait for more of a discount and maybe in the dead of like you know summer when there's a drought of like stuff to play so but I'll see. I'll check out um, some more, like, I don't know, reviews or just gameplay, people playing up multiplayer just to see if it, you know, be something to worth worth my time. So, but yeah. That's... All right. All right. Share comments there, Shockley. Uh, let's see here. Sent. Sent. I mean, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Obviously, you've heard a few of the guys already, uh, kind of like their thoughts and opinions on things um yeah please uh share with us your thoughts on the matter um again like i i really liked uh battlefront uh, growing up and of course i played like uh the newer releases obviously but those classic games they just they hit differently back in the day and um yeah now again there's just a lot of buzz about them right now just you know in, in a different manner what what are your thoughts on uh this whole thing with battlefront and aspire um, well, for starters, I don't know, maybe I've had a total different experience than most people, but mm -hmm. maybe I just live a jaded existence. I don't know, <laughs> but d it, it comes down to, I originally saw everybody like literally, I had to wait till nine o'clock my time to even play the game. And I thought for kicks and giggles, you know, I, I waited till 1030 and I, I pulled up the internet and I see all these individuals saying that, you know, there was only three servers at launch and all this other stuff. And I'm like, this is the game isn't supposed to come out till March 14th. It's March 13th. And we're technically. As is like in my mind, I'm almost like, I wonder how many of those people switch their VPNs to say they lived in New Zealand. I wonder how many New Zealand residents all of a sudden we're having server issues, and I, I like how Crusader touched on the fact that they did have server issues, so I'm not going to fault somebody for having an equipment issue, but when we look at the fact that it's Aspire, regretfully, Aspire has not had a very great track record, as Crusader pointed out earlier, that, you know, when it comes to Star Wars content, um... They were supposed to do, like, like j just in case anybody doesn't, I don't know if you guys mentioned it, but Aspire was supposed to be the guys that did the Knights of the Knights of the uh, Old Republic remake. Right. That was uh, indefinitely, yeah. indefinitely delayed. And, you know, it was supposed to be something that, you know, um, Sony was going to be able to hang its hat on for the PlayStation brand for ex uh, an exclusivity title, or at least timed exclusivity. Um and that got handed off on to Saber now. And so Aspire has had some very interesting, you know, situations when it comes to the Star Wars brand. Um, that being said, though, I did not really fire the game up until the next day because um, I just was playing other stuff. Um, so I did play it actually, essentially, I want to say almost a full 24 hours after its launch or initial launch. Um, and I was able to get in and out of multiplayer games just fine. 
um, other than the fact that I do think it's weird that you there's all these servers that you can play from, and obviously the Aspire ones are easy to get in and out of, but there's all these matches that are privately held on private servers, or they're being hosted on a different means, and you got to have some magical password to play on them. Um, so it's really interesting that a lot of servers are being locked down by the community members. That... That's literally any private match you want to play with your friends. That's strictly how it works. Okay. If, if you want, if let's say I wanted to host a private match and invite you, Dots, Invader, you know, just you guys, I would create a, on the, you can do it on console, you can do it on PC, you create a lobby and you set a password for it and the people get the pa you, you give the pass you have to share that password with your friends but it shows up in the full server browser they're they're not separate there's no, no I, inviting that... your friend to the game it, it is physically you have to go to the server browser and launch it just like you did back in the day they changed well, nothing about how that works me, and that's where for me i really do wish that um, I see. I completely forgot about that, and that's where yeah. you know. Let's talk about quality. Imp it's 2024. Quality of life improvements. Y you know, at least show that they're private servers. You know, don't like you know because there's like no explanation when you get in that room other than you have to really read and see the word Aspire server and then understand. But like, let's think about that. There's a lot of people that would not that would not realize that that's the case and they would think something's up. That's where I just feel like they should have been a little bit more transparent on like letting informing people that those were private servers versus, you know, like, Hey, how come I can't get in? It says I need a password. Um, but that's where for me, I had a great time where I put hours and hours and hours of time into the single player experience. I've practically already grinded out the first game. Um, and that was because I'm just, sitting here with my wife having a few drinks basically just having a good time just mindlessly uh shooting at just <laughs> you know the bots whatever you want to call them um and just kind of reliving those moments from my youth where you'd sit around on like the the pl i think it was like the playstation 2 the original battlefront game came mm -hmm. out playstation 2 and the um the xbox oh yeah See, I, did, xbox. I played it on the ps2 and you know that same. was a same di that was a different world for me back you know if we really think about that i'm trying to like god that was like year 2000 uh it was 2004 for the original battlefront and 2005 for battlefront 2 um See, 2000, that's what i mean i just feel like my high school years uh, all blend together in one you know how many memory, times i but... rented those games i was like you know what yeah. i really gotta buy this <laughs> we went it came out the same night that uh, Revenge of the Sith came out on DVD. They they launched. You could actually get a bundle at Fye. I don't know if anyone knows uh, for your entertainment. It was a they. I think they're still in business, but they're they're a uh, like electronics and like music, uh, film stuff like that kind of store. They sold a bundle where you could get Battlefront Two with Revenge of the Sith on DVD. Um, See, we didn't. And I, that, that's what I got. We, had... we went to the we went to the store to get that because my family's huge Star Wars nerds. <laughs> um, but that's where to me it was just fun playing the the single player experiences. There's definitely a lot of nostalgia there. Um, there's questions on why the game is so big uh, compared to the original games. I'm pretty sure as some people data mine that game and really start ripping it apart at its you know at its seams on a development level that they'll start probably maybe finding out why it's like that. For all we know, there might be some stuff stashed in there for future content release that Aspire was going to try to obviously make money on or keep the game relevant for a little while. Um, it's, it's mostly uncompressed AI upscaled textures. Hmm. Almost entirely. I don't know. Like I said, though, stuff like that doesn't, you know... I just have a good time playing games. I don't count pixels. I don't count hard drive space. Yeah, I know it's weird, but at the same time, you know, it's just one of those things where I've I've actually, I hate to say it, but social media and the assholes on the internet that seem to try to dictate to me my what I should find fun, and I don't mean anybody here or anybody directly. I'm just talking about, like, the gaming media. Mm-hmm. 
um, basically making me feel like, oh crap, did I make a bad decision when I bought a game? And then I play the game, and here I, I here I am like dreading turning the game on, and eventually I just say, screw it, I'm gonna turn the game on and find out, and I'll be past my release window in about one hour. And I literally, once that one hour passed, I was like, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I am fine. I don't know why the hell I had any hesitation. And that's what really sucked about the fact that technically, like, like my initial excitement was affected by, I guess, other people's opinions. And that's where I need to, like, sometimes, like, take my own damn advice and not listen to other people and just play the games I love on the platform I prefer, no matter what anybody says. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. Yeah, that's completely understandable. And if you're having a good time, then, you know, and there's no issues on your end, I mean, you always got to keep like, enjoying it, right? Right. There's like few games you want to like, there's games we all take seriously. Like you don't even want to be drunk playing them mm -hmm. because you want to be in the story or you want to play the game well. And you're just that into the game. Battlefront's one of those games where you just like, do not care. You will literally like... Vibe. Huh? Yeah, it is a like, vibe it, for real and you and it doesn't feel like you're gonna sit there and be like oh my god i just totally ruined my character's stats because i got buzzed no you're just like just having yeah. a few beers with the wife and just aimlessly just shooting at dudes and just mm -hmm. kind of laughing at like because i for me it's also the nostalgia of like why can't my character sprint oh wait <laughs> ps2 that, era the game that they, they couldn't render that quickly they, so there's no sprint <laughs> they added it in the second one Exactly, but um, it's kind it's kind of like what we all know because we keep up with right. video games though when we all talk about the original Halo Combat Evolved there was no sprint because it was a rendering issue same with with the Superman game back in the day where when you were flying around as Superman apparently the whole world was covered in fog because they knew they had to hide the fact that the game couldn't render and so it's just stuff like that when you go back to play some of these games you're just like Oh my god, how did I play this? <laughs> yeah, no, truth truth to that. I mean, I look back on some games and I'm like, I spent so much time on this? Wow. But then you think about it, it's like, again, it was a different time period, right? It was just different. And, yeah. We, we had so much fun playing it split screen in my house after the bar. Mm -hmm. Like, so much fun. Like, the, the problem was getting the split screen to work. Once it did, it was, it was like we were back in my grandmother's basement with my cousin and I back, back, back in the day, right? Um, now, is it only local split screen or is it, it also is only be like I, It is only local. You cannot go online with the split screen, which is another, another thing people are complaining about. Technically, not something you could do back in the day, but it was one of those things that, like, this is a re-release of a 20-year-old game. People were kind of hoping that, like, the split screen well, would be able to work in multiplayer. But that's where we've also um, seen issues with, like, games like Halo that, I, like, I think there's, like, some fundamental issue that is preventing sc split screen to work um, across different consoles, um, you know, and that's where at least for the local thing, um, like you, you were able to already do that. It must be fun to be able to invite somebody over. I would have to like, you know, hold a gun to my wife's head <laughs> and, and probably get her drunk off her ass and oh. be like, Hey, you want to play some battlefront with me? But no, See, <laughs> it, it works in like MCC, right? Like MCC can have four player split screen online multiplayer hmm. on Xbox one, Xbox series. Um, for modern games, it makes sense because you're rendering the game twice, and so the the more graphically intensive a game is, the the more impossible it is to actually do the split screen with it. Mm -hmm. That that that's why it suffers a lot of the time. Uh, it's just with like Battlefront too. It's like, come on, man. It's a, mm -hmm. like a, like a, a, a triangle has more more sides than some of the models, and I don't care because the game's twenty years old. Just <laughs> make it work. <laughs> you know <laughs> uh... um, no i'm just gonna cap off with just you know it's it definitely does lead to like a, a good comparison though of like you know battlefront games today to battlefront games of yesterday mm -hmm. and the, like i would definitely agree that both games have their pros and cons um i that, that I mean, we could sit all day long and talk about the fundamental differences between the the original Battlefront games compared to today's Battlefront games. 
Um, and I just really do believe, like, at this point, when it comes to these two games, different strokes for, for different folks, because, I mean, um, there is some stuff that I really, now because I have played these, <coughs> excuse me, that some of, because I have played these, I do have a little bit more of a deeper appreciation for today's Battlefront games. Mm-hmm. I'm mm -hmm. kind of hoping that the negative reception to this doesn't kill... Because they called this the Battlefront Classic Collection, right? Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that the negative reception doesn't kill the chances of us getting the Battlefront Portable Collection. Does anyone know... Has anyone besides me played the PSP Battlefront games? No. I have not, I'm sorry. Uh, no one has, because they were PSP games. I really want them re-released other places. <laughs> and I, um, I I thought with this being called Classic Collection, we might get a chance at it. But now I'm scared that that chance is gone. How many of them are there, though? Two. Um, hmm. It was Battlefront uh, Renegade Squadron and Battlefront Elite Squadron. And Elite Squadron was really cool. It was also a DS game, Elite Squadron. Because Elite Squadron had base, air, and space battles seamlessly one battle taking place and you could take off from the planet and fly up and join the fight in space hmm. now who, on the psp who owns, the, who owns the ip for him i mean the so all of the uh they, they all re, uh re, uh fall back to lucas arts just like um the uh these two did um who made them originally i actually don't know that i could tell you um you could i don't know the only reason why i say you probably still could was because uh, Jurassic Park a while ago released all the portable versions of their games into Wait. like one collection like a few months ago. Oh my god, it's the Sniper Elite people made it. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Oh my god. Dude, I remember Sniper Elite. Um, well they just released the 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 the, the last one. Did wasn't it a day one game pass game? Uh Sniper Elite 5, yeah. Yeah, let's see. All right, so Re Rebellion, Rebellion made Renegade Squadron. Let me look up Elite Squadron. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause Renegade Squadron was only on the PSP. Elite Squadron was also on the DS somehow. Yeah, wonder if it was a different team altogether. There were also oh. Rebellion developed. There was also Rebellion. Oh. And they also oh. and and space space made the game. DS version. Yeah. Okay. All right. That might explain some things then. Uh, but with that said, uh, is that is that all for you on this one, Sent? Oh yeah. I mean. Yeah, I don't want to, like, yeah. <laughs> it's all good, man. Uh, all well said points, and uh, to like again, I totally get you. All right, and uh, Grimes, why don't you uh, round us out here? Uh, you got any thoughts on this? Uh, I don't know if you had any interest in this uh, Battlefront collection. Um, that being said, you probably again seen some stuff on social media. Do you have any thoughts on uh, the situation? For sure. Regarding Battle Battlefront Classic Collection, I actually uh, haven't got much to say since I haven't played it so far. But um, um, regarding the server issues, I mean, you guys already touched on it. They got fixed. It's not really a big deal. Uh, um, it's also, you know, the, the thing with servers, it's also expensive to run uh, to run a lot of servers. But uh, again, it, that wasn't the issue, so they fixed it. Um, and just like Crusader said, uh, their previous remaster collection of the uh, Tomb Raider game, which was a single player game, uh, may, I may add, was uh was a great release and it was received uh relatively well so i just think like you guys have talked about it i think just they just have some sort of issue of making star wars star war games um i'm not gonna i'm not trying to be a debbie downer but i just think we're gonna see more and more of this kind of things happening in the industry where games are uh, released with issues, bugs, and whatnot, and fixed later. Uh, probably not on the scale of Cyberpunk, which, like I've mentioned before, is one of my uh, 
favorite games of all time. Uh, but um, uh, you know, with with games nowadays, uh, publishers are forcing games to have tighter deadlines, and uh, bugs are inevitable when that happens. Who can forget the state of uh, The Last of Us when it came to Steam? It's because they were pushing for uh, for it to come out as soon as possible. Uh, they fixed the game eventually, and everyone forgot about all the negativity. That game right now it's sitting on very positive reviews. Um, I've heard like some of the issues with Battlefront are the aim assist, the hitbox. Uh, it has hitbox issues. You guys have already talked about the invert uh, controller thing. And uh, I feel like a lot of those issues should be fixed relatively quickly. So um, I, I just think there are none issues, to be honest. Uh, we're just at a, at a time where everything it's been uh, people are competing uh, for software and they're trying to release it as fast as possible. Uh, uh, what else? Can I, I've, I lost my th uh, thought right now. Um, you know, if we have a mentality of uh, it's ready when it's ready. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't be having those issues, but we don't live in this reality. Um, so I mean, yeah, like I actually have the only Battlefront. You guys are gonna be disappointed, but the only Battlefront games I've ever played are the uh, EA games. So I've never played the original, the uh, original games, and I probably won't play the. Uh, this new classic ones. Um, I just I prefer single player Star Wars games, Star Wars games. So uh, they have pretty good single player campaigns. Do they? Yeah. Um. What once? Uh. I would. So here's the thing. Once they fix the the crap in the game, I'll recommend it a hundred percent because it is just a vibe. But like, I, I'm not going to recommend it to anyone until they fix some of the like. Uh, specifically the inverted controls, like that's just the, literally a missing feature. Um, but they, the the especially Battlefront Two, uh, that five oh first. Oh yeah, there's missing cutscenes in the uh, the five oh first campaign in Battlefront Two. It'll play the intro one, but it won't play the outro cutscene. Uh, oh, wow. Don't know why. Um, it's got to be a bug. And I, I did test you. that and verified that myself because I've beaten um, the the campaigns of all. And that was the first thing I did. But uh, the the five oh first campaign, which tells the story of the the clone legion, the five oh first legion, um, from the beginning of the clo or from the middle of the Clone Wars through to the Battle of Hoth, um, and uh, that's it. It is an excellent campaign. I mean, maybe once they fix the issues, I'll. I'll think about it but like you guys have talked about it. there's so many other games to play that yes uh and saying all of that i uh, i just think like all of these things are i i completely understand all all the complaints from people from you guys but these are things that are, are they can be fixed relatively easy easily so i i uh I, d I just don't get all the um, controversy or issues, but you know, and like like we talked about, like I mentioned, The Last of Us was probably in a worse state than this game. And the big issue that people are having with the fact that this is bugged is these are bugs that didn't re exist in the two thousand and two and two thousand and five versions of the game, right? Like, 
but so the engine those games were made in, they probably don't exist either. So with new tech, you you know when you, uh, it's the same thing when you try to play an old game on Windows. Or sure, you gotta put, run it through a billion compatibility things and probably install some special drivers and shit. Yeah, so um, so you know, old tech, old software or tech doesn't always work with newer tech. So I think it's no... that they, these were kind of, by at least in the Star Wars community, they're considered like actually excellent Star Wars games, and to see them go from like. Full, very polished and complete releases to what is a very unpolished second release is kind of very frustrating for a lot yeah. of people. Does I that mean, make I, sense? I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Especially I mean, I, when like, I, I, a lot of us were buying it on the nostalgia and then it's not even playing how it necessarily did back then. Yeah, just like I mentioned, I think, I think it's tight deadlines. Yeah. And... Uh... The, like, I think Invader was on to some stuff with it being the end of the quarter. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, it just kind of seemed that way. Being an Embracer Studio. E well, <laughs> oh, yeah, they still are. They yeah. Are yeah. Staying, they're not even up for sale with the thing so, we'll talk about later. Aspire is strictly staying with uh, Embracer Group. So, so there you go. That's your answer. Embracer. Embrace Embracer is at fault. No. We got embraced. Yeah, and that's Just where I have to agree with Grimes. You know, we're over here like wanting to point the finger at Aspire, where I I still stand beside stand behind with like what Grimes is even saying. This is all fixable, patchable stuff. Um, do we agree with a game developer being forced to throw a game out into the wild? Um, just to meet quarter quarter financial reports that that's not cool. But I'm also not going to sit there and say that Aspire is you know, uh, like basically a horrible development company, even though they've had troubles, you know, like like we always say, and I'm pretty sure Grimes could even agree with this, no ga game developer uh, will show up to work saying, I can't wait to make a shit game today. I think that the the big things that uh, people should go after Aspire for is their stuff with the mod, with modding communities, like the, the uh, using yeah, yeah, the guy's yeah. assets, that was, that's, I, that's really bad. The, I agree and with promising that. the DLC based on the mod from KOTOR 2, and then finding out after they 100% committed to releasing it, that they couldn't and had to walk that back. But, um, you know, can I, can I say, I, I just yeah. think that's probably a leadership decision, uh, stealing the guys. Sure, uh, absolutely. I, I just can't, you know, I can't see uh, a 3D artist just, like, ripping well it, it's not even just the assets it's like yeah. legitimately functionality like yeah, code yeah. functionality line by line has the same bugs well we've we've seen some of the same tactics used in the development of call of duty games where like basically developers were put under the grindstone so hard that they had to do something to basically you know who wants to lose their damn job or something like that so it's also like the nature of the beast that some of these guys are basically put into situations of where they would normally not do something like that in a normal circumstance, but because of the leadership and all the layoffs in the industry and just how Embracer Group is, you know damn well some like somebody would sit there and be like, I'm going to probably do something that goes against my character just because I, I got to put food on my family's but table. They're doing some shit that can get them sued and lose their job. Like, like this is not... Like, taking... Taking the code itself, what, regardless of the assets, whether or not the Lucasfilm can claim that the asset, like the, the visual assets belong to them because it's based on a Star Wars character, like taking the code base is highly illegal. Because um, that, that's essentially uh, intellectual property theft, um, which is wild. But like, it's least... wild that you would publish, that, that, that you would... That that anyone would okay this to be published, and it, like like using someone else's uh, uh, functional assets, visual assets is a little bit of a different story. Mm hmm. Right. But um, yeah, guys. I mean, um, again, uh, we'll see what happens with uh, the Battlefront Classic Collection. Um, you know, 
probably a lot of redemption coming up for it. Again, they'll probably patch a few things and hopefully iron a few things out. Then again, again, if you're just having a good time with it as is, and hey, you just keep on doing that. Honestly, that's like great. Like uh, because these games deserved to be appreciated and to be loved. Uh, these classic titles. But um, guys in the chat, everyone tuning in, thank you again for joining us. If you haven't done so already, smash the like button and uh, share with the show. We would love to have more eyes here for sure. All right, I'm just keeping an eye on the clock. All right, we're making some pretty good time actually. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we'll move over to some other bits of news. And in recent years, the Persona series has been making strides with Xbox, getting various entries onto the platform, including Game Pass, especially Game Pass in recent years. Well, uh, in accordance to uh, certain sources, uh, like insider information, uh, the latest entry, Persona 6, will be making its way to Xbox. Now, Eric Shockley, bud, let, let's hear your take on this one. Like, what's the likelihood of uh, Persona 6 uh, coming to Xbox, in your opinion? Uh, yeah, it looks like it's pretty good uh, from what we're hearing. Um, I think I'd, I was overhearing uh, Nate the Hate on, uh, I think it was, I don't think it was their regular podcast, but I think it was him and uh, Spawn Wave. Um, that we're talking about, and then from what he heard, that uh, Persona Six was definitely coming to Xbox. He wasn't sure if it'd be day and date, but him speculating, and we can kind of see. Obviously, the uh, ports came, so that was a little different. But technically, Persona Three Reload is a you know new title in that sense, or at least a remaster. That wasn't on PlayStation, you know, new game for all platforms. Um, so since that came day one, especially since that one came to Game Pass, like, I couldn't see them skipping. Um, and Xbox has done a pretty good job of getting all these uh, nor normally titles that were pretty much exclusive for at least the first part of the, the you know, last gen uh, for, like, PlayStation, like, Yakuza, uh, Dragon Quest, things like that. So, uh, so it, it's definitely bodes well that it's going to be like day and date. I definitely have my reservations of like now that Square's been like doing, you know, Final Fantasy and even the newest Final Fantasy, at least time exclusive. And who knows if that's even going to come? Then it kind of has my res reservations about will the next Dragon Quest game be day and date or come at all? So, even though that series has been on Game Pass and actually launched on Game Pass when they did the um, upgraded uh, version or of that port. So um, but I don't think it's... I think the post I sent in our group, um, someone was saying that Nate they said that it was coming to... From what he heard, was coming to Game Pass day one. But when I actually listened to him, he didn't say anything like that. So he doesn't I think it's coming to Game Pass day one. He, he yeah. said the opposite. Yeah, exactly. And at least the one I met, heard him talking about it, he was like, he didn't even mention Game Pass because he was even saying he's not sure if it's going to be day and date, but he thinks it would be given what's gone on recently. Um, so, I mean, obviously, we're Xbox gets some IP still skipped you know spin off more so ip i think as long as they can at least get the main line like hey if they do another monster hunter world or something but if they don't get the like spin off all of the spin off monster hunter games or spin off like japanese games like it sucks and they should get more of those but as long as they can get like these mainline type because that's the ones that are going to like really move the needle that are going to sell the most copies, you know, keep the Yakuza's, keep the Dragon Quest, get Final Fantasy back, at least, if you don't get 7, at least get, you know, 16 and all the future titles going forward, day and date, um, and keep the Persona series, and now we're gonna get uh, the actual main line of the Persona series, Shin, Shin Megami Tensei, so that's dope, I never, you know, obviously, <laughs> that game's been on OG Xbox, like J Japan only, uh, for Shin Megami Tensei. Um, it, they actually had an exclusive. I think it was uh, 
yeah, Shin Megami Tensei. I think it was called Nine. Um, surprisingly, they had exclusive, but they did. They just kept it in Japan. Um, but I mean, because those games weren't that, you know, big back then. So even the people that are saying like, you know, people on Xbox don't. Obviously, people. I never understood that. Like, people on Xbox don't buy games. Obviously, they do. Otherwise, their revenue would be abysmal. Where right now it's. I get it, revenue's not profit, but the revenue would still be atrocious if no one's actually buying games in the store. <laughs> um, if anything, like I have Game Pass Ultimate, and I'm not buying the first-party games for the most part in the store, but it frees up all my other... <laughs> since all my other monies uh, for first-party has been kind of like spread out, or sometimes I've paid up ahead, I have all this other you know, free money in a sense that Oh, I'm not even thinking about, oh, I'm going to have to buy Hellblade and this other game's coming out. No, it's already tied up into kind of like a, almost like a finance plan because it's stretched out over the year uh, where you're paying, you know, pro- close to the equivalent of what, you know, if you're buying the exclusives out outright. Um, so you don't even think about it. You're just, okay, cool. You know, I got some extra money. This game's on sale or this game's about to drop. Cool. I can drop the 60 because I'm not even worried about first party games in a sense um so if anything i'm spending more money in the store so you know subconsciously like you're you're not even thinking about it like if you add up what you've spent on game pass ultimate plus the games you spend in the store i probably end up spending more than what i would have if game pass didn't exist um so i think uh when they're trying to say like they don't you know xbox players don't buy those like buy these types of games we can look at like the ps2 like when persona obviously they didn't um you know worry about too much of the big set a lot of those games didn't even come out until like we were into the next generation like a lot of those cinema gamma tensei games or nocturne or persona 3 i would see stuff on you know some of those uh in the gaming magazines but no one i knew that even touched those games (laughs) Like King, Kingdom Hearts was big, but like I've never heard anybody playing any of those games. Never even heard, you know, back then. especially Yakuza on PS2. No, barely any PlayStation fans were playing that game at all. And then they brought it back, uh, the first one, um, and redid it for PS4. And then it got big and finally got mainstream. Same thing with Persona recently is, you know, three and four went. Like that big, but when Persona Five uh, Royale hit, that was a big hit and kind of pushed into that more uh, like mainstream in a sense. And now that's where they're porting it to pretty much every single thing. When it used to be a PlayStation exclusive, now it's kind of got that um, movement behind it, where people, you know, that never touched a Persona game know what Persona is. They've heard it. Um, Whereas, like, I I didn't even hear about Persona until, like, the Vita came out because it was, like, one of the, you know, big games that if you bought a Vita and you invest into the platform, you would hear about it nonstop, like, if you're looking for games on that platform because it was pretty much the one IGN or pretty much anybody that was a fan of the Vita would, like, always point to. So, um, as long as they keep getting a lot of these titles, so, you know, that's... That's the main thing I care about for the platform. That's going to at least... Because um, a lot of the... Was it like the Nintendo... Nintendo's not even going to get a lot of... Yeah, sure, they'll get some of the spinoff ones that just skipped Xbox. But they're not going to get the Persona or uh, Monster Hunter World if they do a, C, a number two. <laughs> um, more than likely, because it's not going to be... It's going to be on old tech compared to what they're going to probably want to do for the next one. Maybe they'll then port the original one to the Switch or something. But um, So even even really only PlayStation is probably going to get like everything. But <laughs> um, but that's only because, uh, you know, those consoles are at least big or have a decent following in Japan. So just by proxy of like, oh, well, it's already on the platform. So it's easy to just localize it at that point. So that's a lot of times why they that platform and at least in the states gets the game because well it's already on the platform for japan 
so it's already there so it's we just gotta localize it and that's it so there's not much work other than just doing that so um that's why xbox really doesn't has a hard time and has had a hard hard time getting those types of games because there's no presence in japan so they're not even you know trying to get it for the fans that are probably going to be the more uh, the bigger bulk of people buying these games um but as le- as long as they're getting some of these main these titles that have been becoming more mainstream yakuza persona dragon quest um and like hopefully yeah shin megami tensei has always kind of been like persona has been the kind of like the more mainstream one even when it wasn't uh over it was kind of like the easier game to get into shin megami tensei is uh definitely the more like difficult <laughs> uh title to get into um so yeah hopefully they It'd be cool if they make it Game Pass. I, I don't think that's going to happen. They got it on this one, although this was a $70 game with Persona 3 Reload. But So that I guess that was surprising. But I don't think, uh, <laughs> I don't think PlayStation's going to let them get away with doing Persona 6, like the actual like new, new game on a Game Pass. Um, but it'd be cool if they did. Um, but at least if they just get a day one, that's just already exclusives that you know are taken away from sony and nintendo no longer having each one of them had you know each one of those titles to themselves basically for almost their existence uh with persona on sony and uh the mainline shimagama titsi on uh nintendo consoles so that's already a feather in their cap already getting all these games that were just straight up exclusive for their competitors and now they took those away so um but yeah, hopefully we get some news on it soon and hopefully confirm that it's coming day and date. So and we'll have to have to wait. Shock. Yeah. You, uh, I don't know if you know who Midori is, do you? Midori Midori's like the the Atlas and Sega um person in like this kind of area, way more knowledgeable than like Nate. Oh okay. Midori gotcha. uh confirmed Nate's report. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, said that the game's going to be multi-platform at launch. Yeah. And uh, it's going to include Switch Two, the, the 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 Switch revision. Yeah, I I could yeah I could definitely see that because of the the way um, the game's usually made. It's not like a. It's supposed to be going a for hyper realism. Game. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, you can't really ignore the Switch for like a a game like that, especially so. Uh, yeah. And in Japan. For how it was, it was a, kind of astounding how long the Persona games were not on Switch. Yeah, well, because they basically had their own slice. They had basically it's. I mean, it's not the same game, but a lot of it's the they same. It's the same demons. It's like yeah. it's like literally taking the Pokemon, and it's like the same because that's what it, Pokemon yeah. was based off of was Shimagami Tensei, and it's basically the exact same demons. So you, if you know how to play. If you've played Shin Megami Tensei, then going into Persona, you're like, it just has this, hey, whole high school thing on it. But when you actually get into the combat, like, oh, this is just Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> um, so you're, so you know exactly what the game is. So they kind of had that exclusive for the most part. There was Nocturne on the PS2, but for the most part, they've kind of had that. And then Persona has just been straight up exclusive uh, for Sony. So that that was a huge get announcement when. They announced that the Shin Megami Tensei 5 that was announced as like a Switch exclusive, which I thought they pretty much helped fund, but I guess they didn't. But Or they helped fund the PAL version, maybe. But um, to see that even leave Switch was surprising. So, But yeah, it, it, these devs are kind of going other than Square, have been like, hey, oh, our titles have, they're actually hitting kind of like mainstream status, kind of cool. We're going to make that IP bigger as you should. Whereas Square's kind of done the opposite with Final Fantasy. They've like, cool, we've we've done really great with Final Fantasy ten and and well ten most part was big and then they twelve kind of came out and that it came out on the PS2, but it wasn't maybe they should have waited for the PS3, but um but even thirteen was big and getting people back in. Fifteen I think did well and then and then bringing the title back to where, hey, we're not going to, you know, we're gonna just going to release it on 
PlayStation only with the uh, with 16, although that one did pretty good as well. But you shouldn't start like, hey, we're going to take Final Fantasy, this IP that's, you know, one of the biggest and oldest IP in gaming, and we're going to start like shrinking. <laughs> you know, it's like doing Call of Duty. Oh, let's just make it exclusive to one platform. Like if Microsoft started doing that, you'd start just start shrinking your... You know, obviously, it would be more people. Those people that are hardcore would move with it, but you would still shrink it to some degree if it was just exclusive to one console. So it just doesn't make any sense. But you know, they do. None of their stuff makes sense. Like, hey, let's announce Crisis Core for Xbox, and the whole purpose of that existence was for you to learn who Zach was from playing remake. <laughs> whether people were saying like well well the final fantasy the original ones on there so it's a prequel so you don't need to play the trilogy I'm like but the whole reason they remade it was to teach people who he was because people didn't play it on psp or not enough people did um so it's like they announced crisis core for xbox but i'm like well of course xbox people probably ain't gonna buy it because you just pissed them off on the same announcement basically spitting in their face saying they're never gonna touch we're announcing it for PC, the remake, but hey, Xbox, yeah, you're not getting that. So, and then for me, I have already have those games on PlayStation, so it's like, well, why would I buy Crisis Core on the Xbox? I'll just buy it with what we're all I own the rest of the Final Fantasy VII stuff. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So I don't know. That's my two cents. So, let other people jump in now. So. All right, thank you for that, Eric. Thank you. Very uh, well said and thought out. Uh, Crusader, why don't you uh, jump in here? Um, got any thoughts on, again, uh, this talk about Persona 6 uh, coming to Xbox? I mean, you seem to be uh, up on the uh, the leaks yeah. and whatnot, so... So, it's almost certainly with the multi-year marketing uh, partnership that they have with Atlas, it's almost certainly coming day one. Um, I think the only reason that people question it is because it would be, like, the first new Atlas game that'd be coming, but it really isn't because Metaphor Refantasio is coming, which is their new IP that was announced at Xbox Showcase last year. Um, so I, I, I don't see a world where it... It, it would be a massive failure on um, Xbox leadership if it didn't. Let's put it that way. Um, like, that they secured all of this other Persona stuff for the last, like, three years and didn't somehow get it would be wild to think about. So, like, I can't imagine that they that it wouldn't be there, right? Like, like I, I don't even, like, justify the thought that it wouldn't be day one on Xbox. I probably don't think it would be on on game pass um uh, because like metaphor refantasio is not gonna be um and uh the atlas published vanillaware game what was it called unicorn overlord right that wasn't on game pass so like i i see them as uh using game pass more for ports of games or remakes of games and not for new like brand spank and new releases so i wouldn't expect it on game pass would be a fire announcement though um but uh i actually expect uh i expect this to either be announced at a nintendo showcase or a um uh or the xbox showcase in june personally I think it could be announced at Nintendo Showcase that announces the Switch 2, or it could be at um, Microsoft's June Showcase, because the Atlas has shown up there like two years in a row now. So I fully expect Atlas to be at that event, whether it's Persona 6 or just more Metaphor Refantasio. But yeah, like, I, I, I and I, I, if I recall correctly, friend of the show, um, uh, Special Nick. Mm -hmm. he um reported back in august that he had sourcing on um uh persona 6 being day one on xbox um i put i say everything that nick reports i take a like serious grain of salt with because he doesn't do as much vetting with it if he hears something from a source he deems even remotely reliable he will report on it and if it ends up being wrong, he will no longer listen to that source anymore. Or he will limit what he takes from those sources. But so I, I don't always consider 
his um reporting to be the most explicitly reliable but uh um he did report on this uh in august of last year so it, it does it does um line up also thimber is saying in chat that metaphor refantasio is going to be on game pass day one i didn't see that i will look that up hmm. i i think they did announce that but interesting interesting well while uh crusader's looking that up grimes since you chimed in uh you, do you have any uh thoughts on uh uh, the persona uh talk here the leaks coming up for uh, persona 6 again i don't know if you're a persona fan at all if you're a fan of those games but uh i don't know do you see this uh game like the likelihood of it uh coming to the xbox platforms yeah i agree with both shockley and crusader both of them mentioned i mean there's no way it's not going to come to Xbox having just released so many Persona games to Xbox. There's just no way it would be. It, it's not. A, they're not square. Uh, Sega is actually a lot s smarter in their uh, business making nowadays than Square. Or, or, or their business decisions compared to Square. Uh, so. I just don't think we live in a world where it's going to skip Xbox. Having seen how well Persona 5 Royale did, I'm not sure how well Persona 5 Tactica is doing, but uh, a few of the guys here have played it, so and I've played it, and I enjoyed it. So, uh, And I'm going to be playing Persona 4 very soon as well. Um, and I, I don't think it's going to come to Game Pass either. But if it did, that would be a massive statement by uh, Microsoft. Of course, there would be a, a nice hefty bag of money attached to it. But non nonetheless, it would be a, a big move. Um, and yeah, some of you guys have already touched it, touched on uh, Atlas's history. Uh, yeah, they've skipped uh, Xbox for most of our history since Xbox is, exists. Um, uh, I, I haven't enjoyed and played most of it, most of our games that have come to the Xbox platform. I love Catherine. Catherine came uh, yeah. released on on the 360 and it was such a great game. The puzzles, the uh, characters were so well done. Um, but uh, I think, it, you know, releasing on Xbox, I think it's a much deeper thing than just being, it's, it's much deeper than just being driven by a financial decision. Uh, it's thanks to Phil, Sarah, and the entire Xbox team and their efforts and their determination not to give up on the Asian market. We've seen how much better the Series X and S have been doing in Japan compared to last gen. Uh, and it's also been helped by uh, the cloud gaming since gamers in the asia in asia prefer playing on mobile um just imagine we've talked about the rumored xbox uh, he, xbox handheld device just imagine if xbox beats playstation to the punch releasing a handheld device in in asia and north america and everywhere in in every market i mean it would be massive in asia um and yeah like i, I love persona 5 royale didn't put it down until it was completed I put so many hours in it uh i can also say um we come around this topic quite often and we don't know when the Persona 6 will be released. But uh, the reason Atlas 
is able to pump so many games in such a short uh, period of time is because we're reusing assets. Some, something the entire industry does. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Uh, we, you know, us as gamers, we want games, and it, it also goes with the previous topic, to, you know, we want games to release on the smallest window possible where uh, we just want to play, we're excited to play new games and um, studios also want to, they want to save money. So the, the only way to do it is by reusing assets and animations, whatever. Um, so yeah, so that's what, that's how they're able to release Persona by Royale, uh, Persona 4, and then 3, it's all in such a short time. Um, so yeah, and you know, uh, but anyways, I am, if Persona does end up on Game Pass, like I said, it would be a massive move for Xbox, but uh, if not, it's fine, and I'm still going to be picking it up. Before that fall, I'm excited to get my hands on Metaphor and see what that game is all about. And yeah, I do think it's coming to Game Pass, but I could be wrong. I think I do remember seeing. Uh, did anyone else check that if it's coming to? Uh, I know Pass? Crusader had to bounce. I'm not 100% yeah. sure, to be honest with you. I'll have to check that a little bit after the show. Um. But I mean, hey, that would be cool, right? Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm not seeing anything about Game Pass right now, but I do think it could be coming to Game Pass. We'll see. We'll see when it when the time comes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, well said there, uh, Grimes. Well said. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Scent Centurion. I'd uh, love to get uh, some of your thoughts on here. Um, obviously a few of the guys have stated, you know, what they thought about, uh, Persona 6, the possibilities of, uh, coming. We know that Xbox seemingly really does like the IP. I mean, they've been bringing them over onto Game Pass and just the, the store as a whole over the past uh, year or so. They like, seem to like it. Uh, do you think that, yeah, it will, uh, Persona 6 would make sense to come to, uh, to Xbox? Uh, hell, even day and date. Uh, listening to you guys, I want to say it makes sense. Um, Shockley is honestly my go-to guy when it comes to subjects like this. Like we, you know, we practically talked for like a half hour after last Sunday's TXR about you know Final Fantasy and like how like the play style and just what I could be doing better in playing the game. Um, and that's where you know I don't really have too much to say. And it's not because that I don't care. It's just I don't like... I'm not somebody that won't speak on something that I don't feel like I have enough knowledge on. And there's no way I could go as in-depth detail as Shockley did. And I would be silly to even try. So at least by me saying from what Shockley describes, um, it makes sense. Um, and, you know, I, it... That's one of those things. Persona hasn't exactly been my cup of tea. I've never played one. I know that the game has a huge following, uh, especially on other platforms. And, you know, it, the more Xbox can do to make their ecosystem uh, enticing to people is always good for business. So, um, and like you guys mentioned, this is a Sega game. So they have a very good partnership with Sega. And pro all I can say is that, you know, it's, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, and I agree with you, Santa. Honestly, I mean, you, you, Xbox and Sega and, of course, Atlas have been very chummy over the years. Uh, they have a really great relationship. And, uh, again, I, I could I could certainly see it coming. Um, kind of 50-50 about, you know, maybe even a Game Pass thing. But, um, 
I don't know, like, again, like, I could totally see that coming, especially, like, the amount of effort that Xbox has put into getting these games onto the ecosystem, so, yeah, I mean, I would definitely, I would definitely, like, lean in favor uh, heavily into uh, saying that, yeah, it's coming, like, day and date, personally, Persona 6, and, uh, let's see here, Dots, Dots, why don't you round us out here, uh, what are your thoughts on this, any love for Persona 6, uh, I don't know, do you agree with the guys, could you see it, uh, coming, like, to the xbox ecosystem hell even day and date uh i think with what microsoft has had in terms of recent dealings and partnership with atlas i think it's a very very high chance that persona 6 is going to hit xbox on release in from my point of view game pass that's that's a little obviously a little bit of a harder statement i think if they did put on Game Pass, that would be a massive power play. I think that would be awesome. I think that would, um, I think that would really, you know, push the push the uh, the market of hey, you know what, uh, Atlas is here to stay. Atlas is gonna stick to you know Xbox for a lot of their content now, and I think I think that would really really push the envelope of you know. Of a of some sort of like a power play, I mean, I I think it would, and obviously that that's like from the gamer point of view. I don't think, um, it would be I I won't say wise, but you know, having them do that as kind of a big middle finger to Sony versus and you know what what is what is actually helpful market wise, like it is is putting the newest persona because like let the like. Persona has grown in popularity, I think, really starting with four. Like, you know, there's your diehard Persona fans who've played them all in Shimigami Tensei. And I know, like, you know, a lot of them like three. But four is where I started hearing about it more. Like, uh, four is definitely when I started hearing about Persona more. And then five obviously took the world by storm. Five was, five at the time was like today's Baldur's Gate in, in a way. It, like that that's you know that was the rpg that everyone was playing was persona 5 but now that there's this popularity around it you know i think you know for for the jrpg fans it, who whoever controls persona you know controls a really good chunk of that niche market um so yeah if if if, if microsoft i'm almost certain at this point with how much stuff that atlas and microsoft have been doing together i'm almost guaranteed that six will hit xbox on release the game pass matter really comes down to is microsoft going to give be able to one drop the big bucks and two you know really willing to throw that middle finger in the market and say you know what we if you want to play persona you know for you know cheap day one game pass so i i'll be really really curious how that goes going forward um i also i mean at this point personally though i still think that you know they're gonna probably milk they're gonna keep milking persona 5 with more you know persona 5 crossover events persona 5 side games i i i feel like persona 5 was such a big cash cow it it, it, it was atlas's skyrim pretty much um i would not surprise me like i know persona 3 reloaded came out i know there's the new shimigami tensei game that's coming out but like um i feel like persona 5 is just such a cash cow they're gonna keep milking that before we get too deep into a persona 6 idea but um no here's hope and here's waiting i mean I, i'm excited to see what comes out of it um Especially with Xbox now, you know, going to be on the forefront of most likely getting it on release. But um, beyond that, though, like, you know, Game Pass is really, really a big guessing game. But if, if, if Microsoft can pull it off, hell yeah. That's all I got to say on that. All right. All right. Fair enough. Again, guys, we'll see what happens, obviously. Just some interesting little uh, tidbits from the rumor mill we're hearing. But again, it's encouraging, encouraging signs, um, again, of these um, 
these games from Sega and Atlas. I want to see more and more and more of them on the Xbox uh, systems. And again, I will pro. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Atlas and uh, Sega present at a, at an Xbox function sometime in the near future. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, let's see, guys. Just looking at the time. Uh, now, I wasn't expecting to go over all like the first three topics so quickly, so I think we will call it a, a night because um, we did touch on Saber Interactive a bit, um, and we can't hold off on a few things. But you know, I gotta say, guys, you know, really nice talk tonight. Uh, you know, we did go over um, like Hellblade Two, the screenshots that we were seeing, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, the whole conundrum uh, with the Aspire release. And Persona 6, and, uh, you know, we did touch on a couple of other things here and there. But yes, thank you, thank you to everyone in our chat tonight uh, for coming out. It was great to have you here. And if you enjoyed our banter tonight, then please hit the like button, share out the episode, and of course, sub to the channel. Next, let's go over to the outros. Uh, Crusader had to leave, but you know where to find Crusader. His details are in the description below. Uh, Eric Shockley, but hey, I thought you had a wonderful chat tonight. Where can all these fine people follow you? Yeah, as always, you can find me at Shock Nero on Twitter, Easy Shock on Xbox Live. But oh yeah, um, I did see uh, Metaphor, not Game Pass, but it it was announced on their like Xboxes like um, event event yeah <laughs> with probably a million other game pass titles <laughs> um but yeah but at least that's a good sign that persona is coming day one since that's a new ip from atlas coming day one so yep hopefully that is the case but uh see y'all later all right all right well said next up dots dots but hey good stuff tonight uh love the uh the passion from you where can everybody find you yeah, no, you can find me at DotsRTS on Twitter and on Xbox. Um, another good Sunday night. Maybe next week we can get good news. Who knows? <laughs> um, no, I, I, we, we, we still have, you know, as you said, we're nearing the end of the first quarter. There's still a lot of stuff coming out. We still had high notes this year. So, like, you know, there, there, there's definitely some positivity still left. So we just we just gotta be a little patient for it. Um, at least we didn't talk about layoffs really this week, so that was good. <laughs> Agree. T- t- take that positive note. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so you know, good good weekend. Can't wait for next one. Mm-hmm. No, I mean as much as we have to cover some stuff at the same time, guys. You know, again, it's all about the games, right, and the systems. And again, all, all you know, I always try for the focus to be on that, right? So. It's just, hey, whatever's, you know, in the news at the time, right? That's the thing. So, but no, I, I would think, and uh, thank you, Thimber, for uh, that uh, comment. It was very much appreciated. Uh, moving on down. Let's see who we got here. Centurion. Sent. Hey, great stuff tonight, honestly. Again, I love your thoughts and opinions. Uh, where can all these fine people follow you at, my friend? Oh, yeah, definitely great show, great conversation. Uh, for those interested, please find me at Centurion1307 on YouTube, Xbox Live, and Twitter. And you can also find me here every Sunday night on the TXR podcast. Awesome, awesome. Who we got here next? Grimes. Hey, Mr. Two Step Grimes. Great stuff tonight from uh, your end as well. And uh, where can everybody find you? Yeah, it's always like you guys mentioned. Love the uh, discussions with you guys. And you can find me on Twitter at Fake Mayhem OG. Always a pleasure. And, uh, you know, looking forward to next week. Mm-hmm. Same here. Same here. And, uh, yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, of course, I'm Invader. You guys can find my content on YouTube at Invader Gaming. I'm also on a bunch of different uh, uh, video sites. Uh, if you're playing uh, Warhammer 40,000 Bolt Gun, I have a couple of guides out for that, uh, collectible guides and so on. If you want to, if you're interested in 100%ing, please feel free to look at that. But uh, yeah, otherwise, hey, I had a fun uh, time tonight, uh, just t- you know, talking about games and all kinds of different stuff. And we look forward to just seeing you here on the next one. 
Later, guys. It's been good.